If you want to take pictures like this, but you're not quite sure how, then this video is perfect for you. It's a fun fact for you. Did you know you cannot brighten or darken your flash by using your shutter speed? Time to get my hands wet. The goal of this video is to try and get you guys in the next five minutes to understand how your flash works. And of course, as we all know, a better understanding of your equipment can only relate to better pictures. Every video you watch on YouTube, the instructor always informs you to set your shutter speed to your flash sync speed. So two things, one, what on earth does flash sync speed actually mean? And two, are they right? Right, let's jump straight in. The first thing, we need to understand what flash sync speed is. Right, so let's first of all explain how your shutter speeds work. So let's use this red bit of paper. The red bit of paper represents your sensor and that yellow bit of paper and this second bit of yellow paper represents curtains, curtain one and curtain two. Now I'm demonstrating here of how your shutter works on a mechanical shutter. In other words, if you have a mirror, a mirrored camera, then you'll have a shutter speed that works like this. If you have a mirrorless camera, then the principles work in exactly the same way, except they're actually called a rolling shutter. So how it works is simply this. If you imagine setting your camera at one 125th of a second, or so 125th of a second, what will actually happen is the first curtain opens and the flash goes off on your sensor, or the light is absorbed onto your sensor from your flash, and the second curtain closes. So really, really simple. First curtain opens, flash goes off, and the second curtain closes. Now, if you slowed your shutter speed down without stating the obvious, a tenth of a second is exactly the same procedure, but much slower. But now let's go beyond what's called a flash sync speed, and then I'll explain why it's called a flash sync speed. If we now increase our shutter speed to 400th of a second, then roughly what actually happens is the first curtain opens, but before the first curtain is fully deployed, the second curtain now starts to close. So 400th of a second is there, and then the second curtain starts to close. Now, if we go up higher to a thousandth of a second, the first curtain opens, and the second curtain is already starting to close. So when we say your camera's flash sync speed, what in essence we're talking about is the fastest your shutter speed will operate, exposing 100% of the sensor. So now we know exactly how your camera's flash sync speed works. Is it advisable therefore that every time we use our flash that we actually set the shutter speed on the camera to our camera's flash sync speed? And the answer to that question is yes and no. There are times when it's advisable to, but there are times when it's definitely advisable not to. And that is what we're going to discuss now. Right, so before I explain which shutter speeds that you should use for whatever it is you're photographing, whether it's indoors or outdoors, let me just explain how your camera's flash actually works. Well, without stating the obvious, if, you, if you're in a low light condition and you need extra light, then without stating the obvious, you trigger your flash and that will give you possibly the extra light that your scene deserves or requires. But um, your flash has a much better property than just adding light. It has what's called stopping power. And the reason why it has stopping power, because it has this thing called a flash duration. Flash duration basically means it's when the light is at its brightest to darkest, when it's on and when it's off. So if it, if it can come on and go off again, then that's a fast duration. If it goes on, then comes off, then that's a slow duration. But the fast and slow duration equates or is measured as per the shutter speed. So let me explain. This is a great example to demonstrate what I mean. This is my Godox 600 portable flash head, but this works in a very, very similar way to your standard speed lights and flash heads. This at the moment is in manual and it's firing on full power. But what it's actually indicating with these numbers here is on full power, that's giving you the equivalent stopping power 
of 220th of a second. So in other words, when the flash pops, the flash duration, if it was to equate to a shutter speed, is 1 220th of a second. Whilst you can't see the flash that much, you could certainly hear the power output. But watch this number here, when I start to decrease the power output of the flash. So when I start to decrease it, watch how quickly those numbers start to increase. And remember this works in exactly the same way as your speed light and your flash heads. Now these numbers here will vary ever so slightly, ever so slightly, but you can see instantly. When I reduce the power output of this flash down to 1 16th of what would be full power, you could see now that the flash duration is much quicker. 128th of the power output of this flash head will give me an equivalent shutter speed of over 8,000 of a second. That's faster than the fastest shutter speed on your camera, I'm guessing. 8,130th of a second at a power output of 128th of the flash head's full power. That is what we call stopping power. But luckily, this particular head will allow me to go down even more. So at 256 of the full power, so that's 1 256th of the full power that this flash head can offer will now give me an equivalence of 10,000th of a second shutter speed. And that is fast enough to pretty much freeze any action. Right, let's get down to the nitty gritty and find out exactly how your flash works relative to your camera's shutter speed, because this is really quite interesting. Well, first of all, let's start off with a very simple uh, setup. So I'm going to photograph this Vimto bottle just using one flash light. I'm going to use my Canon speed light. So my camera setup at this present moment in time is simply this. My shutter speed, I've opted for 200th of a second, which is my camera's flash sync speed. So any higher than that, I've got problems. So I'm going to leave it at 200th of a second at the moment. And my aperture is at f8. f8 will give me a great enough depth of field to ensure that all of the splash zone is in focus. And my ISO is currently at 200. I'll explain why in a second I've opted for ISO 200, but that is my camera setup. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is simply take a picture without the flash going off. And that is just to ensure that the image remains nice and dark. So if by setting up using these settings, your camera is receiving an awful, an awful lot of ambient light, then you need to address that. Put the flash on and let's take a shot. Perfect. And how I've gauged the power of the flash is simply on these settings. I've set my flash to manual and then turned the power down from full, down, 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 until my exposure is correct in camera. And my flash is now set at 1 32nd of its full power. So 1 32nd of its full power. So you've got full power, half power, quarter power, eighth of the power, 16th of the power, 1 32nd of the power. So it's powered right down. So because it's powered right down, if you remember what I explained earlier on in the video, the flash duration has an equivalence shutter speed of around about 3,000th of a second, maybe slightly higher, but it's there or thereabouts. Okay, so now watch. I'm gonna take a picture. Perfect. Now, for the purpose of this exercise, I'm just simply going to slow my shutter speed down just to see what actually happens. So from 200th of a second, I'm going to go click, 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 and I'm going to reduce my shutter speed down three clicks. Your camera is set in increments of thirds, so therefore three clicks equals one hole. So now what I've actually done is slowed my shutter speed down by one stop. So now it's at 100th of a second, and I've taken the shot. Now I'm going to do the same thing, one, two, three, slow the shutter speed down, 50th of a second. Slow the shutter speed down, 25th of a second. Slow the shutter speed down. You can even hear the shutter slowing down. And one, two, three, all the way down to a sixth of a second. Okay. Now this is really interesting because you'll notice 
looking at these pitches, going all the way from 200th of a second, all the way down to a sixth of a second. Bear in mind, there's not much ambient light in this room at this present moment in time. The picture is exactly the same, and yet I've slowed the shutter speed down by six stops. So I should be introducing six stops of light more into the camera. But I'm not, because there's not much ambient light in this room. So let me explain even further. Can you imagine if this room was pitch black, no light in here whatsoever? If I carried on with this experiment, I could actually go down to something like a 10 minute exposure. So if you imagine the shutter opens for 10 minutes, 10 whole minutes, but no light has been absorbed onto the sensor. So whether it's a minute, 30 seconds or, or 10 minutes, it's not relevant. If there's no ambient light, then no light is being recorded. But the very second your flash is activated, the flash has a duration, a length of time. It's bright to dark. Remember, like we explained earlier, at the moment, the flash is offering me an equivalence of a three thousandth of a second shutter speed, three thousandth of a second shutter speed, possibly slightly higher. So that means if there's no ambient light, or as long as the flash is the more dominant light source, it's not actually the camera that's creating the shutter speed. It's the flash. The point I'm making is, and it's always good to know, because it's a fun thing to know, is when you set your shutter speed on your camera when you're using your flash, it doesn't matter what shutter speed you actually use. As long as the flash is the dominant light source and also you don't go higher than your camera's flash sync speed. It probably still is good practice every time you use your flash indoors when there's not much ambient light, just simply set your camera to its um, it's flash sync speed. In this instance, it's 200th of a second. When you go higher than that, let me show you what happens. So I'm going to go to 400th of a second and take that shot. So now this is faster than my flash sync speed. And let's go faster again, 800th of a second and take the picture. And now what's actually happening is now we're actually photographing the curtain as it's going across. And that's why you end up with the black line. There, of course, there are ways to overcome that because most flashes nowadays will have a setting on there whereby you can set it to a high speed sync. But that's for another video on another day. Just to recap, camera currently set at 200th of a second, but it's not relevant, but 200th of a second is what it's currently set at. ISO is 200 and my aperture is at f8. If I wanted to, that could be f5.6 if I reduce my ISO down to 100. But let's be honest, ISO 100, ISO 200, it's not gonna make a jot difference. You're gonna get a really, really clean image. ISO 200 at f8. Likewise, I could shoot this at ISO 400 and go to f11. But anyway, that's where I've decided I'm gonna go at. Pretty focused on the glass. Don't worry, tomorrow I'll explain how this setup works, but today I just want to use a picture for demonstration purposes. Right, so fingers crossed. Let's make sure nothing's gone to sleep. One second, like that. Right, okay, so we're ready to go. So, okay, so ready? So, three, two, one, go. <coughs> Right, sixth of a second. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go. I've just thrown these images into Photoshop. Let's have a quick look. Um, now, I'm not going to clean them up or I'm not going to do anything with them. I'm just using these pictures for demonstration purposes only. This is the very first shot that we took. Focusing on where the ball is, you can see here, absolutely fantastic. It's crystal, it's pin sharp. And if you have a look around, there's no blurring at all, none whatsoever. So just to remind you, my shutter speed here was 200th of a second. Now, if you tried to replicate this shot outside in ambient light, let's say for instance, in your back garden, there is no way that you'd be able to freeze that action using 200th of a second shutter speed. No way, that would just be a blur. 
um, but we tried a couple more and that's another one there which is really good again you can see zooming in there absolutely crystal and no blurring at all nothing whatsoever and I think we tried another one so that's pretty cool exactly the same formula and the last one we took here this was at a sixth of a second and as you can see even if I zoom in in actual fact that looks as if that's one of the better shots we dropped uh, a little Christmas decoration in the glass Ordinarily, I'd have cleaned all this up. You would never seen an image that looks like this, but I'm only using it for demonstration purposes. So you can see it's all pin sharp, tack sharp, and no blurring at all in any of those bubbles there. So there you go. Demonstration over. And three, two, one, go. <laughs> oh my God, you only had to drop the ball into the middle of the glass. <laughs> so, when I said earlier on, it's great to get the kids involved. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Maybe a bit of adult supervision is certainly required. 